Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where I have just purchased this 1973 Ranchero Squire, otherwise known as Brasuria Blanca, white trash. So I've got my brother Cody here, and then Buff from Buff's Garage is here. And we're going to try to get this thing running for the first time in about 10, 12 years, I guess. I mean, there's a significant growth on this thing, I would say. I don't know, the old guy I bought it from did not want any filming done at his place, so that's why it's here. He said it last ran three years ago. I think he might have forgotten a little, just a little bit. Little, little. <laughs> I mean, Time flies, you know, when you're having fun. This thing is not your just average ranchero. It's a squire. It's also incredibly solid. I mean, there is like zero rust in this thing. The interior's not bad. It's incredibly stinky. What we're really after on this one lives in here. Oh, I forgot to mention the nostrils. El Nostrillos in Spanish. What we have here is something. There's a 429 air cleaner in the bed, and then this sticker on this valve cover says 460. However, that is a dove head. And it's got a chrome oil pan on it, so that's 50 horse anyway, and 12 oil leaks. It's got a homemade high-rise with a carb spacer, 750 Edelbrock, stupid GMHEI distributor that will at least work. He said, I quote, It will burn the tars right off it. <laughs> so I guess we'll find out if that's true. <laughs> well, the window works. Oh, I was like, what is happening? Oh, well, it was just, just a Ford window. So the brakes worked. Sort of. One. Something living in here, I think. Dude, that frame looks clean. It's got turbo mufflers on it. So just go straight, you should be all right. What happened? You were about an inch from dropping the front tire off this ramp. Oh, dude, I had it. <laughs> I have a jag. You, fair enough. <laughs> When you're right, you're right. So I was just looking at the VIN tag here, and you can see in the fifth position we have an N. An N means 429 four barrels, a factory 429 Ranchero. Doesn't get any better than this. That's amazing. What'd you find, Buff? Uh, okay, so I found handwritten notes starting in September 2001 of pretty much everything they have done to this car, what they've done to the engine, how they've refinished the underneath of the car. So have the lower end short block, balanced, forged pistons, rebuilt, nine and a half to one, to 10 to one. Port and polish. Yeah, port and polish, yep. Stainless steel valves, cam lift, oh. Man. Cam lifter rockers. What? Well, we got something here. Starters here. This doesn't work. <laughs> this just needs spaced up, and then it would be at the right angle, but I think it's froze. Yeah, carbs froze. Awesome. That's a good start. Start by removing the nostrils. Convenient. Aha! You got algae in there. That's good. Let's just throw a carb on it. That's good, yeah. yeah. That's the best bet. <laughs> well, Cody has abandoned us for now. I guess first step, let's take the carburetor off of it. And then put this random Summit Racing carburetor I have on it. I have us equipped right now. So. Oh, I was wondering where the tools were. Oh, yes. I'm always prepared. Ever since I bought a Jag. I, I really, I gotta stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Got a little rusty. A little water in it. It's not too bad. Mm -mm. You can probably fix that easy enough. Oh, ah, ah. This, is, this is the serious technical stuff people are here to see. Right here. Precision. <laughs> it's shinier already. Look at the improvements we've... It's only been here for like 10 minutes. So, the bailing wire. Oh, well, that's... That's fine. Yeah, okay. that's full custom, actually. All right. You can't just buy that, so... I'm thinking clicky-clack it, uh, run it off the boat tank, just on the ground mm -hmm. at first, just to see make, what it does. Make noise, yeah. yeah. And then, once we realize how magnificent the 429 Ranchero Brasura... Wait, 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 what was... Something Blanco. Brasura Blanca! White trash. Then we'll really commit to it and get it to drive into the garage, and then we'll really commit to it and get it to drive to a car wash. That's your big goals here. Did you see this? Mm-hmm. That is some 1990s goodness there. That's worth like 20 degrees cooling. Oh, easy. 20 more. Yeah. Can we go hook up vacuum lines, choke, yeah. uh, Seems... and hit her with some gas. Extra. And some battery. And some fire. The uh, the fitting. 
here oh, for the yeah, field. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, it may not be as good as we were hoping five minutes ago. We'll find out, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Primer up. Hey! Door buzzer. Oh, well, we got power. <laughs> Come on, baby. There it goes. Now we got fuel. Huh. Uh, you're smoking. Huh? You're smoking. Oh, good. good. Fire. Yeah, good. What's that red light mean on the... Oh, the warning light came off. Yeah, warning light. Oh, shoot. Don't mess it up, Buff. I might mess it up. It was pretty hot. Yeah, I think it has welded itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Am yeah. I just going to be buying a new one? Yeah, I think I think we're good. It's twenty dollars coming out of your check. Well, I inked this one off of the Grand Marquis up there because, well, the last time we worked on something together, we were doing this and put this stuff on it. You want some real pliers? Yeah, I need some cooler pliers. Some real man pliers. Things have escalated. Yeah, this is going to work out. Don't cut me. Good work! And we saved the ring terminals. The numbers matching ring terminals. We saved the cheapest part on the car. <laughs> I'll just install this right here. <laughs> Take two! Let's see if we set this one on fire. Perfect. Nice. Look up the clicky clack, and, and we shall see if it makes beautiful rumpity rump noises. Where's the transmission dipstick? <laughs> oh, wait down here. Uh, it's got fluid in it. It's red. It is red. We will check that out later, but we actually have to go to dinner. Because Buff hit 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you go check him out too. And then we're going to come back with beer and work on this some more. Are we taking the Jag? Uh, the, you're standing by the Jags gas tank. Actually. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, All right. So no. Take a little break in the action right now to tell you about solder stick. I'm out here working on the Torino, putting in an ignition relay so that I can get the points voltage up to 12 volts on it. And I'm going to be using solder sticks to do it. These are really unique little butt connectors. They have solder built into the heat shrink in them. You just slide one wire in one side, slide the other wire in. You can melt them together with just a regular old lighter. It makes it great for on-the-go stuff, throwing the trunk of your car, just in case you need to make a very secure connection on the run. Or in this case, a totally waterproof connection for our Torino. Check the pinned comment and the link in the description and use code POLL20 to get 20% off your first order of solder stick. So check them out and let's get back to the action. We yep. have to make a fuel system. Yep. And then drive this thing over there. So with our case of motivation, we will now remove the fuel cell, install the new NHRA fuel cell. I think I might have worked on it before. You think? Yeah, they used to lug that as a spacer. <laughs> Cody has returned. I thought for sure that he was dead. There you go. Look, a hole. What a stupid spot to cut that hole. Why would mm -hmm. you do that? We're losing daylight fast, but we're hooked up back here. And we are actually going to try the mechanical tank, but I have the clicky clack stuck back there to prime it with, just in case. Buff is cutting back the pathetically small 5 16 fuel line up here. That needs to be changed to a 3 8 immediately. Uh, it has a 3 8 from front to back, but that's not enough fuel for that. I mean, honestly, even a stock 429 is probably not enough fuel for it. We're going to pump and see what the factory fuel line looks like just in case. We're being overly cautious here for once. Ready when you are, sir. Fire. This is incredibly anticlimactic. We got a whole lot of nothing out of that. So how about I just disconnect it from the fuel pump entirely and let's go straight to the carb. It's probably fuel pump or this really, really rusty looking fuel line we've hooked up to. I don't know why you add that but, you know, every time. I, 
I, if, Rust has never caused us problems. So I just uh, popped the fuel line off of the f uh, car side on it, from the hard line, from the back to the front, and that came out. So how about, but there was gas in it. Well, I think that verifies you do need to put a fuel filter. Oh, fine. It. I'll spend four dollars. <laughs> God. How about we just run that thing into a container, flush it, see what it looks what like. So I got the fuel line unplugged and uh, <laughs> that was in it. Uh, I looked pretty clean. I think uh, we're going to run it now through the mechanical fuel pump. See if anything comes out. Are you hooked up all the way now? If I plug in the electric pump, it'll start pumping out up top? Yes. Okay. Sounds Amazing. Yeah, that uh, that doesn't work. All right, so it needs a fuel pump and everything past the fuel pump. That's well, you want me to hit the key? It's worth a shot. <laughs> I'll just pick it up right here and run a street. I'm running a new line. Look at that. Fired right up. That right are on. Guess the transmission. Yep, David Lee Roth would be proud. Anyway, it's dark, obviously. So, we're probably not going to drive anywhere tonight just to kind of be smart for once. However, there's a lot of stuff in this car, and I would love to know what's in it. So how about we start digging it out, and we'll just kind of set everything out on the hood. Oh my god, what is getting burned in that thing? It's on fire! <laughs> It, was it a bat? I don't know, but it was literally glowing red. <laughs> oh, the morning oh, light was on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all makes sense now. What have you found here, oh. Buff? Oh, the picture. Oh! That's this car. Vintage business right there. August 12th, 01. No way. What's with the primer spot above the quarter, though, on this side? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Still there. It's mud that's cracked out right here. Receipts? Thank you for your order. He got some POR 115 rust. He poured 15 the frame. Mm -hmm. and that must be what he painted. Yeah. Yeah. And some marine clean and metal ready. Here, we looked at this a little earlier. The transmission looked at, and then he had it serviced later, right? With a yep. Saturday night special. Port converter and shift kit. Sway bar. It purchased rear anti-slip differential. Well, I don't believe he put that in. High volume oil pump, fuel pump, high volume, yep. So the thing is, with this list here, it doesn't seem like he inst he did everything here. It just seems like this is what he wanted to do, like he was writing out a honeydew well, list for his car. he had a time with everything. So how far does it go? It's May. That's 2004. That's June 2004 was the last one, paint car. Oh. That was his goals then, so it yep. seems like he accomplished some of them, and it does kind of feel like it has a stall, but I don't think he got to the diff yet, because that's expensive. With and that cam, the way you put it in gear and it didn't try to lurch, it, ha it has, has to have some sort of stall. But it doesn't feel like a huge one. No. No, it drove pretty stock feel. Yeah. Ah, well it's good to hear the buzzer works. Yeah, thank God the door buzzer works. It always does in Fords. Hey, there you go. Ooh, got a new oil filter. Brand new. Ooh, Belt. stuff. That is a brand new jack sticker. Okay, so he did buy legit. He bought res restoration Restor stuff. Performance suspension. Control arm bushing set. It did say that he uh, rebuilt the front and redid the... 2002 John McCarty. That's the guy. Hey, uh, John, you out there? Oh, man, remember those? Old over? Old O'Reilly. That's a professional account. Was that one for? Sensa track. Oh, shocks. It has rear shocks on. Uh -huh. Here's the new fuel filler grommet, right? Oh, no, that's the old fuel filler grommet. This thing's got the factory spare in it, <laughs> I believe. Oh, no, that's a Sears tire. But it's definitely old. This thing's just so cool. Oh, there's where that sticker goes. We have three brake pads. So did you notice that Napa receipt is from California? And this car has a Southern, what is that? Southern California Automobile Club sticker. It's a California car, 
Seems like he probably bought it in 2001 and then drove it home from California. That uh, dashboard has California written all over it. Yeah, it does. Hey, look, it's that's a look at that. That's new, I Break believe. Pedal Brake pedal pad. It's missing. Well, here's also a, that's an old Holly, old 600 probably. Vacuum secondary. Look at that. Hey, nice. Nice. Wow. <laughs> what are those? Oh. Oh, there's a whole bunch in there. Here's an owner's manual dated January of 1973. And I'm going to guess those are reman things, but maybe not that one. What's written on the inside of the booklet? I don't know. I can't read cursive. I'm a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Fair City Ford, 611 East Holt, Pomona. 91766 Pomona, California. Pomona. You know, I bought this car for $2,500. Did I mention that? And I bought it from a friend of a friend, and it wasn't even on Marketplace. And the guy didn't even know I existed. The deals are out there. You just got to find them. Or Radiator, Kansas City, Kansas. We found a receipt for a yep. brand new radiator. How much was it? $129 in 2008, 15, and 2001. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask them to price match that <laughs> and uh, get me a new one. So, or Radiator. Watching. Yep. And still in business. Oh, dude, the owner's manual for the sweet Craig Cassiette player. Dude, JD has some cassettes somewhere. I'll probably clean this out and take it to the car wash. Yeah, they'll love that at the car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Buff. Hello. Game plan today. We're going to change the oil on this thing. Make sure we protect that cam. I'd like to hit her with a vacuum, maybe, just so when we drive down the road, we don't get, you know, diseases. Check antifreeze, check brake fluid, stuff like that. Right. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh, hey. That's not supposed to have pressure on it still. It's got juice in it. It does. It <laughs> smells weird. Mm -hmm. I hope that didn't have pressure on it because of a head gasket. Is the oil still clean in it? Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. Remember, Buff, if the car falls on you and you die, it didn't happen here. I just got here. There's a little bit of gas in it. A little gas in the oil? Yeah. Oh, it's outside. <laughs> Horrible. Hmm. Oh, well, there's almost brake fluid in it. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the brakes. All right. Okay. And, uh, they're done. Brakes are all brand new. Ready to go. Doing our new, old, 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 new, old stock filter. Yes. Got a drip coming from the water pump. It's not at the hose. It's above, so I think it's probably leaping from the front. No. How bad of a drip are we talking? Oh, it's just a small. It's not act actively dripping right now. No, then we're going to ignore it. Yeah. Problem solved. Let's try to look through it as you dump it. It's not scientific, but... Well, it looks like oil. It smells like gas. There's no metal or anything in it. No, it's not glitter. You gotta fill this thing up with the finest oil money can buy. Harvest King. And some zinc supplement. Shake well. Nailed it. Nailed it. Seven quarts of Harvest King later. It's full. Yeah. What a thirsty bastard. So I have a mechanical fuel pump on the way. In the meantime, uh, we're just going to run this clicky clack off the drill battery again and drive it into town. It'll work fine. Just in case I decide to maybe not drive like the most responsible person. Not that I would ever do such a thing, but just in case we should probably strap this fuel cell down. So it has these convenient tie downs, which are for putting a boat tank in the bed of it. I mean, everybody knows that. But the problem is, is they don't really, I mean, I, if you kind of angle it like this, it works pretty good, but it, there's just a little, you know, a little, it's not, there's no tension on it, you know? So if you just find some stuff laying in the bed of it, like that thing, this will work. Oh, dude. Oh, that's perfection. Adding another ratchet strap will solve this problem. Get the alignment just right. Oh, yeah. Uh, now you nailed it that time. You got like a 28 and a half degree angle on that. Thing. That's perfect. You're my genius. I'm amazed, even by myself. Yet again. That's a self contained fuel system right there. Boom. Throw that in anything. Look at these cute little heart magnets. Oh, isn't that adorable? Uh, I'll run the vacuum. You want to wipe off the door panels? Yep. Oh, you're using my patented headliner repair method. Yeah, I saw some guy do this on YouTube. I figured if he can do it, I can do it. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he got what it takes, but it was actually JD that did it. So this is true. Good luck. Nice. It's nice. Not Fixed. As, not as good as JD. 
No, he did better. Headliner is completely rebuilt now. Cut the carb stud to fit so we could put the nostrils back on. This isn't really going to keep water out of anything. They probably just funnel it in, actually. Oh, well, that's right. It's going to rain. Yeah, it's about to fire up fuel system. We'll check if uh, if it's got transmission fluid in it. Look how handy this is. We're going to O'Reilly, right? I got a core alternator and a battery to bring back. It's already it's already working out. Will it run? Not with that key. Good at farm at home, I picked up the finest transmission fluid for three dollars and fifty cents a quart, if you can believe it. Got upper end noise. Got a rock that's happening in it. Good. are pretty damn good because you rebuilt them yeah they're brand new oh uh, we got to tune this thing this is a pig after it's clean though you'll notice we're fertilizing as we drive we're spreading good all over the world tip gauge works speedo works i don't think it's accurate it's self-healing it is. Wait, the clock doesn't work? The clock, I'm taking it back. Oh, yeah. I think we need to check the timing on it. It feels really lazy. By the way, here's the rain. Oh, shit, they work. Well, let's get some blades. You got this air. You got the blades. Sounds cool, though. Oh, yeah. We'll get a new air filter, too. That thing's plugged up solid. Break it up. It's got a lot more in it than that. That's too small of a carb on it, too. No doubt. The Summit carbs, they kind of suck. Sorry, Summit. Oh. Got some tires rubbing. That's good. Will it restart? Sounded all right. Actually, I think it cranked a little too easy. I don't think there's enough timing in it. It's beautiful here. So you know, we're going to do some important restoration things. and. Uh, change wiper blades. It's cozy in here at least. Yeah. Oh, I gotta hook up the fuel pump. And we're back. Yep. What the hell's up? <laughs> it just stops. It's like, yeah, you don't need that part of the window. Hmm. Well, Marginally better than no wipers. Come on, move. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Tell you, you can't get tanned leather patina like this. The patina people are going to be so mad.
can't really make the ugly duckling not ugly, but we'll try. Car washes hate him. Good reason. Ah! Still don't go over the whole windshield, but they parked. It's just spinning. Come on. There we go. Nope. Or is it just that happy? Uh, it's definitely not happy. It needs something. <coughs> oh, something's dead in there. <laughs> Why'd I turn that on? Something flew out. I ate something. Yeah, I think I ate it. But well, that's working fine. It fixed itself. Yeah, it's just, it's grinding up some fibles. It's fine. It's flying through. Yeah, no, everything is okay. Buff, this is an important lesson for you. Ignorance. Just, just, if, no, <laughs> it's supposed to do that. Leave the dads. Let's see if it makes it home. Camera died, so you're on my phone right now. Forgot to mention, we put a new air cleaner on this thing, and I think it made a big difference. <laughs> Try, damn it! I kind of goosed it there, and uh, it wasn't happy about that, was it? Throttle stuck. I think I heard something sounding like a vacuum leak. Uh, it wasn't the throttle that stuck. Hmm. Those be there. Mm-hmm. I don't really. Nothing's really jumping out at me. The thing is, the thing actually has enough power that it's kind of scary to uh, drive home with a stuck-on throttle. You know? They are definitely held open, but why? Oh! Oh! That. Probably that. Yeah, the kick down. No, it was not that. It's it's like wanting to go a lot. Aha! Looky down in there. Secondaries are stuck open in this wonderful Summit Racing carburetor. <laughs> it's this thing right here. There they go. Yeah. Oh look, it's fixed now. There's a screw right here and it's too tight. Right down there. I didn't feel like it's gonna kill us now. Yeah, we're gonna go really slow and seat belt interlock of all things that still work. We're gonna take a nice leisurely drive home. It was a pretty uneventful drive back home. That's hot. Actually running a lot better. I actually think the problem is it's probably in the carb that we put on. Uh, that's all I got right this second. I don't have any bigger carbs laying around. All, all I have is 650s. I'm gonna clean up some of this. Look, look at this. This is the distributor power. They've spliced in like an inch of wire into the distributor. So we can fix that. We're going to make sure that this actually has 12 volts on it all the time because it's a points car originally, most likely, and it probably did not have 12 volts all the time. So we're going to check that, pull plugs out of it, and throw a new mechanical fuel pump on it. I ordered a new gas tank for it. That'll be here later this week. May not make it into this video, but it'll make it into a video. But we can at least get away from, I mean, I know that's great, but... Uh, I bought a generic crappy O'Reilly fuel pump for this thing, and I don't know if it's going to work for us or not. I guess it probably will for now. 3 eighths in and 5 sixteenths out, and, and that's just not going to feed this. I don't know if I'm wasting my time or if I should just bite the bullet and buy a high volume fuel pump. Then again, I don't have a high volume fuel pump, and I have this in my hand, so... Question answered. These are, of course, absolutely no fun to get to at all. I've enlisted, or rather conscripted, 
buff to change the fuel pump on it. So I'll, I'll take the comfy job of pulling some plugs out and seeing what they look like. I'm not expecting to find anything too wild here, but well, you never know. It might be a cracked porcelain or something like that. Buff, this is very hot. It's hot. Hmm. It's like they just drove it. So I pulled number one out, and I don't know if you can see, but it's uh, pretty black. No oil, which is good, but uh, it's just rich, you know, and that could have been from the car before, or it could have been from that plugged air filter or something like that. Put it in my handy dandy spark plug organizer. You can get these at Jags. Put every one of them in here, and we'll get a nice picture of the overall health of the engine. I've got that fuel line out, and it is kind of plugged full of crap, but uh, it's not too bad. We can reuse this. Again, it's just probably temporary, unless we don't have any fuel starvation issues. But thinking we might. Well, I've got the plugs out of it. Let's take a peek inside the cylinders and see if we can tell what kind of pistons it is. Look at that thing. There's beat all that hell. That one looks good. Looks like a factory piston to me. That's kind of what I was wondering. Really nice looking cylinder wall, but... Uh, so did they just put a cam in it? Looks like they rebuilt it. I don't see any marks on the piston to indicate like a bore or anything like that. You see these lines mm -hmm. in it? I don't think that's a cast piston. Okay, so maybe it did do it. It might be a forge. Is it full of crap? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we could definitely change that out. I got all the plugs pulled and most of them are all right. This guy, number six, he's just super pig rich. His gap is also narrower than all the others. Uh, I don't know. I think we throw a new set of plugs in it, gap them correctly. I think that was probably a remnant from the old carburetor. What I got here is just a set of basic auto lights to throw in here, mostly because they were cheap. I'm going to set the gap to just a tick over 45 thousandths. Maybe a little longer burn time, help it out some. We'll see. All the plugs are back in. Buff's wrapping up the fuel pump. I'm going to pop the cap off and see what's inside. Looks just fine. Pure Chinese, you know. But we'll pop that back together and then we'll just verify the timing after we get her fired up again. Just taking a peek back here, you can see that brake booster line's got a big split in it. Uh, so let's go ahead and change that out while we're in here. But dirt my oh, yeah, look great. Yep. Gas fumes. But more importantly than you, is it done? Yep. Yeah. This thing's hosed. Get it? <laughs> Good chance that was leaking a little bit. You can check the one-way valves in them. So you blow in it should let you blow in it because it's sucking you know the engine is sucking on the booster to put it in a vacuum but if you suck on it it shouldn't be able to suck through it so the valve's good goodbye clicky clack it's time to return you back to your home in the jack extra click you know yep yep okay. well let's get it fired up and throw a timing light at it and see what that's doing we're to get it uh fired up. I'm trying to fish up in here for the coil power and let's just make sure it's got 12 volts while running and under a load. So did I get the firing order wrong? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Firing order's wrong. Okay. I got something mixed up. Well I mean I had five out of eight right by guessing. Didn't work out very good for me. But it was a thought that counted. Okay, we'll take two. That sounds better. Alright, got good voltage. Really good, really good voltage. Got here alone. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, so that's not a problem. I got no vacuum and fan switched up. I'm going to guess that that white mark right there, that's probably the timing mark, I imagine. We have seven degrees of initial timing. Twenty-six degrees of total timing. Let's give that initial a little bump. Let's loosen this guy up. Make sure we get a little twisting on there. Oh, look at this. I could sell powdered ranchero. I think that's illegal in like 12 states. No, it is. That's 
too much. That's about 36 total. Probably okay, but let's play it a little safe. 32. Let's try that first. We're pretty high on our float level. Like, I can't even see the fuel level in the back full here. It's above the sight glass. And the front one's a bit high, too. It's not that bad, but you can see it in there. So, you really want these, I mean, at least on a Holly, you want it right at the bottom of the sight glass. You know, you want it so, like, if you lean on the fender, just a little fuel splashes out. So, these are pretty high. Uh, I think we should back them down just a little bit. Oh my god. Alright. You're gonna do this, aren't you? Can you, like, not be dumb? Please, please don't fire. stickers on it. Oh, right. I'm going to put this on Cricket. You know that, right? Of course. No, it doesn't really stick. Well, Buff's trying. Trying. So when this doesn't work, I know there's somebody out there that makes these things. And uh, if you want to send me some, uh, you know, and maybe one of your own decals or stickers or company or something like that. We'll put it right on this rancher. Pretty much that exact design. Well, I, I took the nostrils off because I want to eliminate the nostrils from the equation. And I'll probably take that off too when it's running pig rich. The nostrils, they're just, they're nostrils. Uh, let's see if this thing runs like it should. The brakes work less good now. So that's good. Let's go, uh, you know, repave some roads. Hopefully. Dog. It's better. It falls on its face. It might all be that carburetor. I mean, it won't breathe at all. It's got too small of a fuel line and a really crappy carburetor. Maybe like, uh, about burnout time? I'll try. I don't think it'll do it. anything I own would outrun this with ease. Sway bar's doing its thing. It turns well. The 30-year-old uh, tires are doing their thing. <laughs> Give it like half throttle. Where are the sight glasses at? I can't even see the back one. Front float looks fine. It's this back float is the one that's giving us trouble. It's sunk. Oh, I can see it. That's what it is. That back float sunk. I bet it's got a hole in it. Oh. Because I can see the float tilted down. So Dalton just made a very good point. This is probably full of 87. And this engine, with all the upgrades, probably needs something a little more premium. So he went inside to go pay and you know, top this tank off. I don't think this boat tank has anything to do with it. Nah. That engine should be making every bit of 400 horsepower. And it right now is making about seven. Why are you so hot? Cool off. It's hot for teacher. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it is, but it ain't really. I 
mean, it still is a dog, but at least it's running decent. Yeah. Didn't feel like it was sucking it dry. Yeah. Anyway, let's get tacos. Yep. Those were pretty good tacos. Awesome tacos. The other thing I was thinking of over tacos, it wasn't getting full advance until like 3,900 RPM. It's just way too late, so maybe I should throw a curve kit in it. At least a lighter spring or something so it gets in a little bit quicker. Like 2800, somewhere in there. Because this thing's got like, probably like two to one gears in the back and well, that's not very good. So <laughs> it needs to get it in a little bit faster. Maybe it healed over dinner. Okay. That didn't fall on its face. No, it's running better. All right, we'll buy you a new radiator hose. <laughs> that was good. Okay. It will drift. What changed? Because <laughs> you, you got tacos. I took the air cleaner off. Still needs a car. It's but it's better. There's it more is. air, yep. thus proving the idea. More air, more 429. That's science. Um, we've sprung a leak. I noticed. I just looked up at the rearview mirror. <laughs> it looks like a whale is just spraying. Hmm. Yep. Wonder where that's from. Oh, it's yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's sharp. Oh, when yeah, when you're doing donuts and the tank moves, apparently cuts the pull. Oh, you know, it's almost like this uh, maybe isn't the correct fuel tank. I I don't know why. I, I thought this was factory on the seventy three four twenty nine. You know, I could have swore because there's was, only what? How many? Three hundred twenty of them? You know how those kids are at the parts store. So I mean, they'll sell you any. It's probably for a damn Kia or something. Mm -hmm. This is oh, like wait. fixing an artery. Okay, right? You gotta go right on the yeah, on the bleed. You're not on. No, uh, it's got two. Uh, there's two uh, lacerations to the artery. So oh. go to that has slowed the bleeding. At least the seatbelt buzzer works, though. That way we can be safe. Because that's the safety buzzer yeah. we need. Right. Not, Not the, uh, holy shit, look at that buzzer. I put a lighter advanced spring in. Only one, because, well, I only had one. And so that should make it a little bit better. We're going to fix that fuel line. And I'd like to take it out one more time and see if we can diagnose anything else. You know the definition of insanity? Driving a ranchero. I have a piece of radiator hose here. I'm going to armor plate this. See, this will never be a problem again. And after I get done armor plating this, I think I'm going to throw a timing light on it again. I might tickle just a little bit more timing into it. Maybe we're at 32, maybe 36, no more than that. Those were dish pistons in it. If it's not a super high compression engine, they could probably run 40 and be fine. You're not going to get this on Discovery Channel, you know. That yeah, is good. fixed. Yeah. Yeah, that's good now. Oh, okay. No. no. Bad idea. I was wondering why it was getting warm. You know, that, that I was a little worried about that, but uh, no, I'm not. All in by about 3,200 now. That one spring made a difference. It should be 36. If it restarts, we'll run that. There's no way. 160? Because it was running two something. Well, no, it has a gauge, but it just says C and H. Oh, that's right. Maybe it's running perfectly fine and the gauge is bad. Here we go again. Third time to car. Whoa! Woo. Find different people to terrorize now, though. If you do too much in one spot, then you get arrested. That's bad. spring that that's a good sign it pulled okay and then it's like eh. i mean who knows if the secondaries are even opening in that thing good 
much. Probably all oil. This used to be the radar section of a Nike missile battery over here. The uh, missile section is right down the road. This was a Nike missile battery. This is where they would detect incoming ICBMs and then shoot them down, theoretically, with nuclear warheads of their own. Now it's nothing, but maybe there's some pavement left. What's that thing? Got a paving machine. Yeah, it's a road widener. Ooh. <laughs> Sam's not taking very good care of this place anymore, is he? Well, this is just where they send the taxes, but then they actually put them in their own There's the taxes right yep. there. A pile of bricks. So much taxes. $12 million. Is that a road? That's a road. That is road. What a car to do this in. I mean, it does have all-terrain tires. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're set. It's been a building. <laughs> Tip gauge. Is it, is it? You can't go through the window. Oh, it's yeah, it's only 85 through the window. Oh. Wait, uh, it, where are you at? Yeah, 120. I don't think that's necessarily accurate. Hold on. Oh, that's on the distributor. Stand by. Oh, okay. Uh, my aim is off. You can't get out. <laughs> that can't be right. It says 140. It's running so cold. It's running too cold. The gauge doesn't know what to do. This right here was the Nike missile battery. And most of it's still here. Uh, I don't know what it is now or if it's, oh wow, they've torn down a lot. It used to be double razor wired all the way around. Got a little guard shack that's not being good. Well, this has underground uh, portions to it. It has the no silos, but elevators that the missiles would rise up on and then launch from. It's, not, it's like two stories underground or something. But boy, wouldn't that be a killer shop? I've always thought of buying that just to be like, if I you know, ever had the money. Oh, more bricks. Taxes. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for this one. We got the fuel tank coming, and, uh, and I need to get a bigger carburetor and change up the fuel lines, probably get a high-volume fuel pump. These are things we're gonna have to wait on, so we'll probably do that in another video on this Ranchero. Let me know if you wanna see more on this thing. I, I, I think I kinda wanna work on it a little more. I actually bought it to flip it. Now I'm like, I think I gotta keep it. So, I don't know. Big thanks to Buff. Thanks for coming out. I love no this thing. Thanks for having me. It's a good time. Yep. So make sure you guys go check out Buff's Garage on YouTube. And uh, you know what? You might even see him driving this thing to the duct tape drag so we can't get his van done in time. Yeah, Which you is, guys have to watch for that. I, I keep, stay tuned to see if Buff finishes his van in two months. Otherwise, he'll be stuck driving this and paying for the gas. <laughs> I think we'll just go cruise these back roads a little bit. And uh, I'll come up with a plan. I think there's something here. We just got to find it. See you guys next time on Bull Barn Garage.